Welcome, affiliated listeners, to another very exciting episode, which should be sponsored by Quiet Man Whiskey. But this really just lubricated the conversation we're about to have. And why you should be so excited. I didn't know. <laughs> <you though. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that was your choice, Thomas. Uh, but why you should be so excited today is we're actually talking about somebody that I think is maybe ClickBank famous, which is the amazing Jen Lacombe. So she is somebody that went from not knowing anything about this industry to be one of the largest YouTube affiliates that we have on the platform. And we're going to talk about how she did it and what you need to know to be an amazing YouTube affiliate today. So with that, first let me say hi to my amazing co-host and brilliant person who's far too sober. <laughs> Thomas, how are you doing today, man? I'm too sober. You're no, too sober? <laughs> let me just slide this good. over. There we go. Um, <laughs> not an official sponsor of this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I should say, Jen, how are you doing today? How was your flight? My flight was long, but I'm here. I'm here. Yes. Yeah, I should let people know, Jen literally started at 3.30 in the morning. What? And has Where gotten off you? the plane <laughs> to just, I don't know what she did, rails of coke, I'm not sure, but something <laughs> to keep herself awake. We drove her here, and she is on the podcast. Oh so it is I, I am here. impressive. <laughs> no rails of coke required. <laughs> <laughs> That's insane. 3.30 in the morning? Yeah, yeah. well, 6 a.m. flight. So, oh. yeah. Well, Boise has so many direct flights. So yeah. I know. It, was, it truly is a gem yeah. of the Rocky Mountains because it's hard to get <laughs> to. Like, How do you like Boise? I love it except for traveling yes. to the East Coast. Yeah. Then it, yeah. Yeah. You'd love to stay here because it's hard to leave. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> logistically. Well, thanks for making the trip out for Diamond yeah. yeah. We're super so, excited. So happy to be here. Yeah. So, well, with that, starting off today, I think uh, some people might have seen a video that we did that highlighted your journey. But before we kind of get into some YouTube tactics, I will tell the listeners we are going to cover some, some very specific YouTube things that if – you know, you want to take advantage of what I would say is probably the one of the best traffic channels right now in YouTube and the affiliate game. We're going to have that. But before that, I want to spend some time learning a little bit more about how you got here. Not just on a plane ride, but going <laughs> from the journey of somebody that didn't know about this world, impacted by the pandemic, and now is um, experiencing crazy levels of success. So um, walk us through kind of at the beginning, I guess, what what were you doing before you got into online marketing? I, I was uh, pouring whiskey. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. It's almost like we should have a whiskey bottle involved in our podcast. It, almost like it's like destiny. No, yeah. I uh, I was pouring whiskey and and managing an establishment known for um, drinks and food. And yeah, when COVID came along, that, sorry, is this that, a bar? Uh, or a yeah. bar? Yeah. Okay, it's like I, I love the way she described a bar. Yes, um, I managed yeah. restaurants, a restaurant and bar, oh, nice. um, and and bartended as well, right up until. Right up until basically the, uh, you know, the president said I couldn't anymore, <laughs> more or less. Um, so, yeah, I found myself with a lot of time on my hands and needing to figure out, you know, there was so much unknown uh, at that time, right, in 2020, so much of wh where do I go, what am I going to do, how long is this going to last, you know, things of that nature. So I decided to really focus on a plan B. And so uh, plan B became, you know, just looking for different ways to make money online and I actually started off um, with Facebook. Uh, just really kind of dabbled, I would say more dabbled in Facebook. I came along the end of 2020 into 2021 on Facebook where you know things kind of started to implode a little bit or we thought that the sky was falling as far as iOS, iOS updates and things of that nature, having uh, account difficulties with Facebook and things like that. So, um, I, I just basically, the time was right to take what I learned from Facebook and shift over to YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And things have been good since, maybe? <laughs> how, how would yeah. you define it? So. Yeah, uh, it's been, it's been life-changing for <laughs> yeah, sure. And, and I'll just take a second to say I'm real. <laughs> <laughs> not She's not an actor. actor. Yes. I'm not, not an actor. Yeah. Although yes. you don't have a website to prove it. So I guess yes. you'll never be able to prove Gosh, that you actually Jen, exist. Never yeah. know. Well, like, but if she was an actor, wouldn't she have an IMDB? I mean, that yeah, would right. have to yeah. exist somewhere. I have a few card. websites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I, what I'd love to do is actually dial back a little bit. Because I think um, one thing that a lot of people find themselves in my mm. listen to this podcast is there's a big leap going from aspiring for a plan B, aspiring to do <laughs> yeah. something online, mm -hmm to actually jumping in and doing it. Now, I know you had a little bit of obviously um, situational push because you're mm -hmm. like, I need to make money and the government Which, tells me I can't. You no, know, right. I think it's a car, like, remember the 07, 08 recession, right? How many yeah. people do we know that were involved in the real estate business that are now marketers? There's yeah. quite a few. And I think yeah. this, you know, your example of what's already happening with COVID has forced yeah. people into a different situation. Yeah. Well, I think we also bring up, because we know we're, 
a lot of people are talking about a cusp of recession. There's going to be a lot of people that might be, whether they want to or not, forced to change their career. So, um, you know, going through, I'd love to just explore a little bit the emotions going into that. So you're sitting here, you're looking around like, how did you find affiliate marketing? Why was that the option, given all the plethora of things that you might have jumped into? Sure. Well, I was actually looking for wholesale items to resell on places like eBay and Amazon, oh, okay. which I had had, um, I had done in the past with little, you know, eBay shops and things mm -hmm. of that nature. Just like Gary Veeing it around different, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something, something yeah. like that. So, <laughs> yeah. So I was just, I was just looking for products to to go ahead and post, and I came across um, affiliate marketing and really didn't know much about it. And was really intrigued by the fact that it seems like uh, there was a lot going on in the health space, knowing that that space, you know, that vertical is not going anywhere, right? And 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 I and I really I can connect with a lot of, you know, those those offers, those products, and things like that. So I thought this is different. This is something I want to learn more about. And so I I dove right in, right? And I I did. I spent a lot of time really trying to learn and really understand like how it works, why it works, the psychology behind direct response, and the um, the offers that we are promoting. And it took a while to really. I mean, I was at it nonstop with the intention of I am going to build a business out of this. It's for, for me. It wasn't a side hustle. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, you know, failure was not an option. Type of a thing. It was like I am going to make this work, come hell or high water. Right. So how many hours were you putting in during that time for on a basis? I mean, as many as I could. You know, I mean, I was home, right? Home, COVID, kids, laundry, <laughs> right. things of that nature. So every hour I could put in. I, as I as did. a father for the idea of doing something besides raising those four children does sound appealing. I can understand committing those hours. <laughs> <laughs> I love them. They're all great. No. Um, uh, th that's me. I really appreciate because I think a lot of people probably could connect with that feeling, mm -hmm. right? Like, and I love that you said too. It's. Uh, Failure wasn't an option. Not that it's not an inevitability, but it's like you got to keep going and exactly. fight through that, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. where, were you, where were some places that you found that you were able to get like trusted knowledge from? Because there's a lot of noise out there, right? Like where were you kind of picking up? Like, okay, I can go deep with this person or this tr knowledge source. Um, well, I I I purchased a course. Is okay, that what nice. you're saying? Oh, I wasn't sure if you did a course. Oh, yeah, or if I there's did. Other places online I, you're learning no, from or like yeah, yeah, I did, mm -hmm. and I was actually able yeah. to get into a. Uh, a really great community oh, of, nice. of okay. people yeah. where I was able to ask questions and, and being being able to kind of dig deeper and, uh, you know, get get the questions answered that I needed to, which was super, super yeah. helpful. So you, got, so you paid for access almost, right? Yes. To, like, to the, yeah. the deeper level knowledge. Yeah, nice. so it yeah. was an investment for me as yeah. well to, to, to learn and to get started. And a scary one, but well worth it. I imagine, especially when you're in a situation where it's like, I don't know where my next paycheck's coming from. Yeah. And I'm now spending money to find it. You know, that that's that's a scary thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get nervous thinking about it, if I'm being honest. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, Now, one of the things I really like you said, too, is that you really focus on understanding the psychology and the why behind mm -hmm. these tactics. Well, actually, before that, though, what was the course that you ended up taking? I took a course called Healthy Commissions, which Healthy was commissions. Um, Facebook, around, uh, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. all around Facebook. Yep. It's mm -hmm. awesome. So for those out there, it's, it's good to know a success story for health commissions. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, but so yeah, going back to that, though, like, why? Why did you focus on the, the, the why, the psychology? Like, what was the reasoning? What was your logic behind that? Well, you know, I was sold by a really good webinar. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you healthy know? commissions, guys. Healthy <laughs> commissions. Maybe Our your next link will be in the yeah, show yeah. notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's not really what intrigued me. What intrigued me was, you know, of course, being able to do something from home that mm -hmm. had kind of what seems like unlimited potential, right? As far as paid traffic, mm -hmm. um, as far as having all, you know, so many different offers to choose from, different products that you can get into. And then, of course, with so much traffic out there, it's kind of like sky's the limit as long as you can test methodically and test hard and commit to that process to be able to find your winner and scale up. And, you know, one winner really, really can be life-changing. It's awesome. We're going to circle back to a little bit yeah. later, particularly testing, because you just need the one winner. But no, I think it's really interesting to see that. The reason I brought that up is I think oftentimes a lot of people focus on the end goal mm -hmm. or a tactic, um, but they don't spend the time to learn the psychology behind it, right? And they're like, why am I failing? Like, I did just what they told me. But if you do something that replicates somebody else without knowing why they do it, there's a good chance you're not going to do it right. Mm -hmm. um, copycatting is only as good as how well you could replicate the source. If variables change, 
all of a sudden that might not work the same way. And if you don't know why it was working, you can't adjust. And so I think I see a lot of people jump into this world and they fail and they can't seem to understand why. And I just wonder if maybe a lot of it's because they're not investing the time in the why something works versus what it is, if that makes sense. So, sure. Do you feel like that benefited you quite a bit? Absolutely. Like, and, you know, being really trying to dig in and understand the psychology behind it. And then it becomes pretty fascinating because it's like, wow, I've been, my mind has been getting played with for all of these years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It makes you like, like respect the game and also get frustrated when it's working on you. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, like exactly. yes, I'll take the upsell. Like a, fine. I, <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, it's like, Am I like weird? Like I get, I feel like I need to give dabs to every person that does a good job with marketing. I was like, I will buy. I will buy. Damn it, that was good. Here you go. Take all my money and tell me how you came up with this. Right, I respect like, it. This is yeah. like, duh, it's working. Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's, I should be smarter than this, but I'm not. The yeah, way. right? It's like I know exactly yeah. what they're doing and it's working on me yeah. anyway. Yeah. yeah. No, that's super <laughs> awesome. That's super awesome. So I was curious, like, going to that, like, what is your creative process like? Because as the affiliate, I assume you're, right, you obviously I need the ad creative mm -hmm. and then you need. I assume you're hosting like a bridge page or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so those are probably the two main touch points you have. Are you collecting email at all? I'm not. Okay. Not so yet. I'll not say. yet. There we go. So, <laughs> so yeah, your your customer journey, if you will, they're touching two of your assets, and mm -hmm. then you're sending them to the seller's sales page. Right. What's your creative process when it comes to the ad creative and that bridge page? Like, how are you kind of coming up with the different assets there? I always start with um, with the VSL, right? Mm -hmm. we'll go through that. I take I take a couple hours, I would say, to really go through the VSL and take a lot of notes. And I find that if I can take good notes, that my my ad is pretty much written already, just just about. So it's, you're going to the seller's video sales letter, mm -hmm. you're just kind of jotting down notes that, that they come to you? Yeah. Yep, mm -hmm. ex exactly. And uh, the different points, because they're using the same psychology, right? It's just kind of drawn out into a longer video. Um, so just making sure that I kind of understand and I'm touching on the points that they're making, because of course, if I can't sell it, it's, you know, if I can't sell it ahead of time, it's not going to convert anyway. So I need to be able to really dig into what it is, how they're marketing their own product. Um, from there, I, I kind of reverse engineer it. Where I do start with the landing page, which is a, qu a quicker um, quicker to, to build than a full YouTube video. Sure. And uh, you know, once you kind of find, uh, I guess, a, something that's working for you, you don't really have to deviate too much from it. You know, I have like my little landing page template. I can get it done in fifteen to twenty minutes. I'd say I'll spend more time creating the images because I really enjoy it. I could spend all day in Canva, you know, just making just just making different, you know, different landing page images. But it's it's kind of a template for me at this point with just, you know, headline image, buttons, where to go, where to push, et cetera. And then kind of reverse engineering that back and back to the video. Nice. And okay, same yeah. thing, same thing, you know, look, going through the uh, my notes first. It's just about my 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 um, script will be practically written for me. I have different points that I know I need to make in every single video, so making those, and then it's all about the first five seconds, all about that hook. So I'm trying to constantly brainstorm and being open for a different inspiration. I have to text myself ideas, you know, while I'm driving, <laughs> things like that. Whenever, whenever something comes to me. encourage texting and driving, Jen. Voice can't, we can't yes, condone yes. this. <laughs> I'm recording, recording Please use to Bluetooth myself. and hands-free technology. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm hands-freeing myself. <laughs> So, I mean, gosh, I mean, I think that's a really impressive process. Um, and I, I think it it's sounds hard. It sounds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds like well, I was going to say, no. it sounds like it is, it's work, right? Well, I joke, but yeah. right? Because a lot of affiliates are like, what do I, I just, I did this, right? And like I said, they copied something and they pasted something and it doesn't work because they didn't go through that mm -hmm. process of yeah. understanding why. Yeah. yeah, actually watch the video. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, to be fair. How do I come up with landing page ideas? How, oh, many, I wonder. how <laughs> many marketers and affiliates we talk okay. to that have never watched a full VSL before? Mm -hmm. Quite a bit, actually. most of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely aren't doing it actively yeah. anymore. If they did once, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, no, I love that because actually, that's that's how I started learning marketing was just watching full VSLs, reading and breaking down sales pages. So, um, from one person that has broken down far too many sales pages and VSLs in his life, um, I'm really curious to know what your notes are that you take pretty consistently because I'm wondering like versus the notes that I tend to take. <laughs> so, so what are the things you're looking for when you're looking, like? Is there specific triggers or things when you're writing those down? Uh, yeah, well, I'm actually, you know, after you've watched, let's let's just take like the weight loss niche as an example, right? After you've watched enough VSLs, you know, all the psychology, it, it starts to get repeated. So one of the things that I'm always looking for is just unique language. Mm. Saying the same thing in a different way. It kind of like sparks your ear like, hmm, 
that's an interesting way to say that. I never thought of that before. And I always jot those down mm. and bring that into, into my script as just a unique way. Just, you know, say the, say the same thing and just with different language. Yeah. Yeah. That's People super love smart. different. Yeah. It's, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, if you think about it, you know, we could obviously consume more VSL and marketing content than the average consumer, except sure. for maybe some that I've seen. Like I'm like, man, they consume every VSO and buy all of them. But no, but <laughs> for the most part, most people don't. But when you think of something that gets you out of bed, you're like, whoa, I've never heard that before. Mm-hmm. What is that going to do for a consumer, right, that isn't even hearing all the marketing stuff, all the other things? Um, that's a super smart tactic. So, you know. Well, thanks. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> no, it's really good. But at the same of the day, it's not a tactic. Because you actually have to put in the work to do that. Yeah, so it's right. really, really good. Right. I've seen Kyle's notes when it's mostly about cults and how he can apply it to <laughs> yeah. that. So. No. My notes only yeah. make sense to me because yeah. it's like some word that's not <laughs> even in the codex. To, yeah. Yeah. You need like a codex to get through it. You're like, what have is you ever, to say? So this yeah. is a question. That, this might just be my, a me yeah. problem. Have you ever put notes down? And because they're incoherent enough, you're looking at your own notes and going, what was I trying to do or say? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. I'm not crazy. And then, you know what I do, too? I draw pictures. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. And that's actually, a, you know, kind of an actionable tip as well with um, with going through that creative process, right? I think one of the hardest things for me is coming up with a really cool, like, opening image, right? That We're talking about that first five seconds. Mm-hmm. And so I also turn to the marketing of the product for inspiration, to come up with those with those different things. I've had a, 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 a huge winner recently within the last couple of months that is 100% inspired by the hook of the VSL. I didn't come up with anything out of the ordinary. I put it together in, an, in a unique way, but it's all the marketing of the vendor. That's awesome. Do you have any of your notes with you right now, by the way? I left my notebook at oh, home. I'm so mad. I was going to say, if we could get a picture, maybe this weekend, yes, we get a picture like chicken of some of your notes. I feel like if we could add that somehow, <laughs> that'd be so cool. This is one of these moments where Dylan's like, Kyle, stop saying stuff <laughs> we can't do. But I'm going to say we're doing it, even it's if we can't podcast. later. It's audio. We can't put a picture in there. Yeah, video. <laughs> we'll edit it in there. This yeah. is the part we do it. Right here. Right here. There, yeah. camera. No. <laughs> um, well, that, that's super awesome. I actually wanted to circle back a little bit, going away from process, and it was a really good specific thing. Great question, Thomas. Um, Thank you. But yeah. <laughs> so I think uh, before we, I'd like to talk more tactics. Before we do that, I actually want to bring you back in the way back machine. Um, I think we have a lot of people that do listen to this podcast ready to achieve the success that you have. Um, and so they're always wanting to know what, what is that next thing? What's the thing that I need to do? So just before we kind of go into some modern day tactics, I'd love to kind of hear from you. If you could go back and either tell somebody in that same boat that they're looking, they're a, whether it's a career is being a career change is being forced on them, or they just know they need to do something different, and they're entering into this online affiliate world. If you go back and talk to that baby Jen, what would you tell her, or what would you tell everyone else would be the number one takeaway that they should do? To uh, have your success? First, to have realistic goals and expectations, and really know why you're getting started, so that you have a you know the, knowing that if if you, if the reason why you want to do this is strong enough you're not going to give up but going back to those those realistic goals and expectations is you know again like i've said before you're building a business it doesn't happen overnight it's a labor of love and you know just like if it if you were building a brick and mortar business you're going to open up a whole lot quicker if you show up every day than if you show up once a week so uh, you know i tell myself show up every day no matter what type of a thing, even if it's, and I do, I don't have to tell myself anymore. It's it's like an obsession and addiction at this point, <laughs> as my husband is probably burning a hole in the side of my head. <laughs> 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 like she's always on that damn computer. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, knowing you're building a business, so you, you need to show up every day if you want to be successful. So, um, so talk me through that. I know you have sense of it. Talk me through what you mean by realistic goals. I think that's something where oftentimes the marking that gets you into this industry doesn't always seem predicated on realistic goals. So I'm curious what what kind of the realistic goals were for you starting out. Well, my goal um, when I first started out was just to be able to um, to cover my unemployment check <laughs> that was about to stop coming in. So I my my goal was six hundred dollars a week. I figured if I spent six uh, six hundred to twelve hundred dollars a week and made a profit of six, that that's you know you figure roughly one hundred fifty to one hundred percent ROI. That if I test, you know, if I continue to test and find something that I'd, at least is, can bring me then that consistent profit, that that was good enough for me. At at that time. At that time, <laughs> and you're like, wow. I know. I should yeah. start moving my goals. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and and also just even like visualizing, you know, like. 
I would I would visualize I I did it's almost embarrassing to say this but like I was so like I don't want to say desperate but desperate to make it work that I would tell myself like mantras when I was going to bed like I'll be a top affiliate I'm gonna yeah. be a top affiliate one day like telling myself that mm -hmm. so you know things like th things of that that nature picturing six figures in the bank account you know stuff yeah. like that to it help works, push yeah. you over the edge I was listening to that Logan Paul interview that he did with Roland Frazier right and Logan he's talking about how I'm gonna be the biggest entertainer in the world right and he's on his way yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like well you can see it happening right yeah so, no that's well, I like to tell you backed into the exact almost math you needed, right? Mm -hmm. It's like if I spend this and I make this and I can get to my goal and that seems achievable, right? So how do I get to that point? You can mm -hmm. really just, okay, well, today I have to do this then. Right? Absolutely. Can, yeah. and, and even breaking it down day by day, like what do I need mm -hmm. to make per day if I'm going to run, let's say, run paid traffic six to seven days a week? You know, how much do you need to spend? How much do you need to make to be able to do that? You know, even figuring in like, okay, if Saturday is twice as busy as Monday, I should spend more on Saturday than I'm going to on Monday. <laughs> mm -hmm. Things, you know, things of that nature. And again, having those realistic goals, what can you spend? With paid traffic, you're going to have to spend some money and you'll get there a little bit quicker. If you need to go, you know, free or organic, there's that too, but it'll take a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the other thing I really liked is, and you guys have mentioned, is like visualize big but set realistic goals to get there, yeah. right? So you didn't start off being like, I need to be the biggest affiliate ever. I need six figures <laughs> in my bank account tomorrow. And right. if you do, you probably need to do something besides affiliate yeah. really You yeah. might need to go to a loan shark. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not legal what you need to do, right? Um, but but like the yeah, idea of like name. backing yeah. into like, okay, this is what I want. That keeps me motivated yeah. to show up every day. Mm -hmm. And then it's... Let's set the realistic goals, and then we can move that target. I, th I think that honestly, it's sometimes sometimes the least sexy advice is the best advice. It always is. It's the personal development stuff. It's yeah. Like, I was going to say, like, if anyone is struggling with this, the One Thing book. I can't remember the author, but the book's the One Thing. Mm -hmm. Totally helped me with this exact thing. Right. We had a big, like, it became a BDM at ClickBank. I had a big commission target to hit, like mm -hmm. onboarding target to hit. I was like, well, how do I quadruple that? Because that'd be cool. And then just backed into it through that yeah. method. I was just like, okay, well, to month, this month I've got to do this. Yeah. And you got there way faster than you thought you would, well, because things compound. But yeah. Mm. I remember you telling me this advice. Mm -hmm. And now that Jen's telling me, I'm going to listen to it. But Maybe I remember yeah. you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do it. So yeah. but no, that's no, that's true. Because you well, hit that yeah. really fast, too, mm -hmm. when you just started doing that target. That's really awesome. So, and Jen, here you are with something that some people haven't achieved and maybe even been trying longer than you. And you're able to do yeah. that and much more mm -hmm. um, very, very quickly. I mean, relative. So let, let's get an idea. So you start, um, when was your around, can you estimate when you first started buying Facebook ads? I In March of 2021. 2020, okay. So about exactly two years oh, ago. Yeah, I was like. And then when was the first <laughs> time you hit diamond status? Which for those that don't know, diamond's 5 million top line revenue that you yep. associate to your account. I, I think I got the news in July of 2022. Nice. So that's yeah. yeah, less than eighteen months to go from that's a pretty good run rate. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> I think good. so. Yeah. You know, you know, go from zero to over five million yeah. in that time frame. That's pretty awesome. So that's pretty awesome. And you know, at the time when it first started to snowball, I was like, Oh my god, I made platinum, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then we started talking about um, you know, do you know what they they with diamond? Like you could do that and like they'll 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 like, you know, you can go go out to Idaho and see the ClickBank headquarters and I was like I can't I can't do that <laughs> it's like that's too big of a goal are you kidding me yeah ha look at you <laughs> yeah. 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 woke up at 3 30 in the morning yeah, yeah. Right. Right. fly way too long you're to like I regret here. this yeah. <laughs> wait till tomorrow you no. made four, <laughs> four million to nine hundred ninety thousand yeah. and, and you know to be fair Boise is much love Boise Sun Valley is much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the sun. Yeah, in the winter for sure. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so, you know, Boise is a great place. I'm not bashing Boise. Yeah. So, well, no, that's really, I think that's just oftentimes people, um, and it's really easy to fall into the idea that success feels easy, right? Yeah. We buy products because they make success feel easy. But what, just what you described, none of it's easy, right? It's not complicated. It's just, it's hard work. It's goal setting. Mm -hmm. It's showing up every day, doing the work, not the tactic. Um, it is really what it takes. So if you're wondering right now, how can I make my business more successful at a very base level? Yeah. That's what it takes, right? Understand the why. Put the I work assume, in. Absolutely. I don't want, want to go into personal finances too mm -hmm. much. Sure. Not too much, but. Okay. <laughs> I, I know people were questioning, right? Yeah, well, it's like the top line revenue. Oh, it's top line, right? But I imagine 
with that kind of ad spend and that kind of top line revenue that you're making more than $600 in profit a week. Yeah. To cover your own appointment, <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, you know when someone says the mm-hmm, it's good. And, I, imagine, and yeah. I also imagine you don't have plans to go bartending and uh, restaurant no, again. No, soon. that's so those days well. are yeah. over. Those are you days, sure they're I'm over? Positive. I'm positive. Yeah. Oh, I really had some. I really I mean, bumped some plans for this weekend. Listen, that I I'm, a, I'm available for private clickbank okay. events. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Well, yeah. um, so again, I think this is really, really powerful. But now let's talk about um, some. Let's go more specifically into the YouTube stuff because not only we started in Facebook. Um, as I mentioned before, you're one of the leading YouTube, Facebook media buyers on our platform. Um, I would say in the industry, um, you've done that in short order. Um, I, I want to circle back to something you said earlier around testing, because I mm-hmm. think that's really, really impactful. And sometimes um, people really seem to fall short in the testing realm. And you said you test all the time. So walk me through kind of your process of how you go about testing, picking a winner, finding what selections you need to do, um, and just talk us through your process a little bit more. Sure. I'm going through it right now. As we speak, um, I start off with uh, two two scripts at a minimum. Hopefully, I only need to do two, mm-hmm. but um, two that are roughly roughly two minutes in length, like as a voiceover, mm-hmm. right? Um, I start off there, and I, I basically test them with the same hook, the same opening scene. Um, you know, with with the YouTube videos, that first five seconds is the most important. So for me to get a fair test of the body, the body of my video, I test those the same. And, I, and I'm looking at costs, I'm looking at really what kind of results am I getting from the power, just the power of the words in the body. And then I just stick with that one, like determine the winner of that script test and just kind of move forward. And then I start dialing in the first five seconds. And is, sorry, is the winner determined by revenue or the conversions, by click-through rate? Like how, what's like the main metric you're looking for? ROI will testing? always be ROI? king. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I mean, I'm, I'm really looking at the cost per click, the click-through okay. rate. Um, and the cost that like, it's, I also try to get a feel for like what Google, how Google feels about my ad, right? So I run YouTube ads, which means Google paid traffic just to clarify that. (laughs) (laughs) Whoa, Google and YouTube. (laughs) Wait, does that mean Google owns all search engines? (laughs) (laughs) Pretty much. But yeah, it's finding the balance of like what's compelling to the market and what Google, I guess, quote unquote likes Mm -hmm. is that that really kind of the golden ticket to, to being able to find a winner. So I'm looking at, I'm really trying to read the algorithm and read Google as I test. And I'm, and I'm doing that based off of like the costs, like the CPC, mm. the better the CPC more, more than likely the better Google likes my ad. Um, so I kind of go through that process. Once I have a, the script that's deemed the best, then I start going into the hooks and then the opening scenes and then kind of dialing Dialing in the first five seconds, then moving from five to 15 seconds, uh, then 15 to 30 seconds are like the chunks that I focus on. And if you can k- keep somebody there and get the click after 30 seconds, you're in, you're in pretty good shape. That's awesome. I really, it's really awesome. I love the fact that you start with really the body copy, yeah. right? Like that's where you start. I think most people actually start with yeah. hooks. I, I mean, myself yeah. included, right? I've like, Generated offers, it's normally all hook led. Because the mindset lead. that you can test the hooks faster than you can test the body. Yes. Okay. Yes. That makes sense. Um, so yeah. I'm trying to start large mm-hmm. and then dial it into smaller and yeah. to the most important, right? Because the body's probably not as important as the hook, mm-hmm. right? So I so I start with the less important, I guess you could say, and then and then yeah. come bring it in. Mm-hmm. But I think the interesting part is like you're actually starting with the part that the close is the hardest yeah. to test afterwards mm-hmm. like when you if you think you have a good lead you're getting good clicks and everything's dropping off in the body you know like, I, I don't know why it seems mm-hmm. like people watch up to 10 seconds 15 mm-hmm. and you're like uh, you know way harder to figure out so you're actually starting i think with the harder point affirming mm-hmm. that it's it's just i've never actually heard someone yeah, test that way know. so i'm actually i'm really it makes a lot of sense um because mm-hmm. you can think like sales pages and vsls what do you test first headline headline right yeah. or you test your lead your first five mm-hmm. minutes and i'm like yeah i'm sure something will happen later <laughs> 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 but in reality, it is a very important part. So I, just, I think that's really interesting because I, I could tell you I don't hear as many people testing that it's way. More, yeah, yeah, it's more expensive to test yeah. that body part, right? Yeah. So from yeah. Uh, from the beginning of your testing to like scale or dump, how long does that process tend to take for you? Um, it can take a solid, I'd say, two to three weeks. And I'm somebody that like if I if I decide that I want to promote an offer, it's pretty rare that I'm that I dump anything. 
um, I've got to really go through the process and make and be confident that like, okay, I've I've given this a valiant effort. I can't get it to take off. I'm gonna leave it alone. More than likely, I'm like a dog with a bone, and I'm gonna work on it until I can get Some it to go. Some off-roaders just perked up. Going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How can we talk to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's really it's that northeastern sentiment though. Like I gotta get it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so, so on that, I think that's really interesting to have that way because I actually find we see this pretty often with affiliates. They'll give like a one day test. Not nah, didn't work. Done. Move on to the next one. It's offer sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sucks. Yeah. Offers wrong, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. so, uh, but so often there's really solid offers you just have to tweak. So I know this is always tough, but can you think of an example of maybe an offer that maybe your peers, or you know, other people would dump that you found really good success because you put in the time. Or maybe sustain success longer than other people you know? I know that's a tough question to come up with off the top of your head. Um, I'm not sure. I'm trying to, trying to think. Something that, I, I mean, I don't think I can give you a specific example for that one. That's okay. It, uh, it was a pretty I was curious, yeah. specific question. Yeah. So. That was a bad question, Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Open was, criticism here yeah. on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just some green and red flags yeah. for each other. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Hey, I didn't ask that somebody if they would eat humans. So yeah, we're that's how we started this whole podcast. <laughs> oh <laughs> that was the very first question. I think it was our first episode. Would you yeah, eat yeah, human flesh? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway. Um, <laughs> well, you know what's crazy is that I'm into that crazy macabre yeah. stuff too. We'll so. talk later. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is not even the here. weirdest question I've asked. So. No. <laughs> I was curious, like, what helps you? What uh, about an offer helps it pass the gut check for you? We're like, yeah, I want to test that. I'm really looking for things that are just new. I think that I think that just being able to be an early adapter mm-hmm. definitely makes life easier. Um, one of the things, you know, going back to what would I tell my my earlier self that we were talking about before, um, I have actually really tried to get into smaller niches that okay. that people aren't looking so hard at, right? And kind of try to gobble them up for myself, <laughs> type of a thing. Um, so, like your own so, blue ocean out there, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think with you know a lot of people, you know, you look at page one of ClickBank, right? It's like weight loss, weight loss. Everybody wants to get on weight loss. And of course, it's super lucrative. But so are the small offers, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, so with a little less competition, which would be really valuable. Do you, do you mm-hmm. find like I'm curious, like, is the scale smaller or but they can run longer or can you scale them as well? Like, is there like a middle ground with those? So small far, yeah. I have found that I can that the scale is just does does just as well. Nice. Yeah. Maybe it doesn't last as long sure. as a mass mass appeal niche like weight loss, but it can scale just as just as awesome. well. Okay. You're giving hope to the other niches. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm like, maybe I might yeah. be saying too much over no. here. <laughs> no <laughs> one follows me. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the other people that come talk to us. And, and no, yeah. I, I, you know, it's funny. I actually tell a lot of affiliates and even offerers that oftentimes it, it's easy to go after the biggest, sexiest weight mm-hmm. loss. And listen, it's huge, right? Like, which sounds mean as we talk about weight loss. We always do like, big, huge. And that's kind of unfortunate. But um, it's, it's obviously has broad appeal. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is, um, a lot of these sub niches actually have just as much impact, yeah. but um, it's not as talked about. So just because people don't see it, it's not visual, right? It doesn't mean it's not actually very impactful to somebody's life, which makes sure. them, I think, really fantastic places. Prodentum is a really good example of yeah. an offer that is they more niche. Blew up the dental niche, yeah. But it's mm-hmm. been that offer has been running for two years now. Uh, yeah, how about that. More? Mm-hmm. I know time. Once I hit 30 times, become really soft. Like it's everything's just a year ago. <laughs> My mother says, Oh, that was the other day. It's like, yeah. Oh, that was 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. The it's other day. it's yeah. a big range. Yeah. The other day is a big range now. Um, so, the, yeah, I think that's really, really powerful. And that's a great tactic. And there's a lot of good offers too within those realms that aren't at the top of the leaderboard that mm-hmm. you can make a lot of good money at. So. And as a, as a new person, I think one, um, one, uh, example or analogy someone gave me as far as, you know, being brand new as an affiliate and trying to jump straight into the number one offer is kind of like, you know, you're putting yourself in the Super Bowl against Tom Brady when you when you want to do that. So as an as a new affiliate, stay out. Try not you don't don't feel the need to go into the ultra competitive stuff right off the bat. I like that. Well, yeah, people. I don't think people realize like how if you just scroll down the marketplace, right, just say hit search and then start to page one and go to like you can go quite a bit until there's like just bad offers. Like mm-hmm. There's a lot of really good offers that are are 
convert well. They just don't have the scale of the top 10, mm -hmm. right? There's a ton out there. So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, you can mine pretty deep and still find really solid yeah. offers. Yeah. Even in the weight loss space. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I would tell you that th this is a weird soapbox to go into, but it, it didn't always be that way. It didn't always be that way. Gosh, I forgot how to speak English. So <laughs> it wasn't always that way in ClickBank. I think sometimes yeah. offers would get a lot more um, diversification when we had a lot more email affiliates. Um, but I could tell you right now, there are offers in our marketplace that could be getting a lot more traffic and make a lot more money for for media buyers out there. But because they're not on page one, they're not getting that attention. So no, I think people realize there's advice. like you know, multiple eight figure offers down mm -hmm. like page five, right? It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. there's there's tons of potential mm -hmm. um, that newer affiliates and sometimes even experienced ones are missing out yeah. on. So, um, well, real fast, I know, I know we're get, we've been having one conversation for a while and you're probably like prime for a nap. Um, <laughs> but to, before we go, I think we've talked a lot about things that we should be doing, things you're doing in the testing process, but you've also seen a lot. And I wonder, what are some of the challenges that you're experiencing right now? You've had quite a meteoric rise. So I think sometimes people think that everything's great once you're there, but there's new challenges you're facing. So what are some of the challenges you're facing right now at, at your level? Right now, um, I... I'm seeing my campaigns kind of maybe maybe I'm breaking them, <laughs> perhaps, um, in the sense of of the scalability that that I'm seeing. But also, I'm seeing um, my, some of my ads just aren't lasting as long as they should. Um, my costs my costs have started to rise. Um, just I guess because of competition or perhaps lack of originality in 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 my in the ads of my competition. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, mm -hmm. yeah. we'll expand on that a little bit more. I, it makes sense to me, but I want to make sure the rest of the. I was just nodding because I wanted to look smart. So oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I think that when you can really, as you're going through the testing process and and getting your creative juices flowing, looking for looking for inspiration in the in the offer, like what we were talking about, um, you know, you want to be original, like with YouTube it's a content creation site. And so you need to be putting original content out there. And I think unfortunately, um, some people are lacking some of those creative juices or at least the drive to kind of dig deeper to find some, some new ideas. And they like to go after mine. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, and so, so yeah, I'm seeing some some issues with my campaigns with costs when that happens. Yeah. It's one of my struggles. Well, I think that's, this is always a good time. I think, we is a very common challenge in um, inspiration versus replication, mm -hmm. right? The, you, there's no long-term benefit to use a marketer, affiliate marketer to go out and just replicate what somebody's doing. Because ultimately, at the end of the day, like it's, especially on YouTube, it's just going to burn out super fast. Mm -hmm. Like it might work for a very short period of time, but it's going to burn out. And you're always going to be left looking for the next thing. Um, versus if you actually put in the work, you create it, it could sustain, and you'll also be able to, to replicate it yourself versus replicating it from others. So a, a big consistent thing I tell, again, listeners to the show, if we find out any of you are stealing, no, we'll be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> shame. Yeah, for shame, all of you. But like, really, like, it, it does you no – like, a huge disservice not to just learn and do it a way that mm – -hmm. It's gonna make sense, and yeah. if, if you're struggling, it's probably because you're not doing what you talked about, right? Mm -hmm. Like lots of people, are like, well, I can't figure it out. My ads don't work. Well, did you actually watch the VSL? Did you make the notes? Do you understand yeah. the emotional levers that are being pulled? Do you know the mechanism that they're getting into? Because mm -hmm. I'll tell you, that in, as you know, cohesion to the VSL that you know should be converting from your ads is going to increase everything, make it better. Absolutely, yeah. and and with the visuals too, you know, trying to tell a story with your visuals. I recently learned uh, a tip of like. You know, if you can turn the volume off off of your video and and just watch the the visuals and still know what the ad is about, it's good, type of a thing. Oh, so that's really cool. so yeah. so also, you know, putting the time into really creating um, a story with with the visuals of your ad as well. It's that's all great. storytelling, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Stories are our lives. Wait, was it? Oh no, I was trying to think of the time of our days lives. Of our lives. Days of our lives. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't there something in our theaters of the days? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Just, we'll we'll move on from that fast. No, keep so, going, please. So, <laughs> <laughs> so outside kind of the traffic stuff, what are some of the other challenges you're facing in your business right now? Are you still solopreneur? Or? Oh yes, I'm. I'm a one woman show. Still, wow. Yes, yes. Um, working on trying to kind of find find an assistant or two perhaps an intern an apprentice somebody that can work kind, with yeah, me what kind of work do you need to delegate um 
I think I think the biggest thing for me would be like um, infrastructure, like different domains, landing pages. Oh sure, like having um, this stood up and that stood up. Yeah, and, okay. uh, sites, things like that, and then also just video creation mm -hmm. is for me what takes the longest. I can get a lot more done um, in the time it takes me to make one video. I can go do you know write a couple scripts or. You know, do you need so? Or do you still want to come up with the scripts? Do you want to just hand that off and the video gets done? Like what part of I this? would love. Yeah. I, I mean, I would definitely outsource some scripts, but then I would, you know, chief it in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Sorry, this is this is get Jen an employee section. Yes, so yes. Gonna, yes. Yeah. This is where we say, <laughs> listen, listeners. Yeah, look, we're gonna do some dedicated. <laughs> you might be thinking to yourself. I'd like to be Jen. Well, hey, maybe it's not be Jen. You could work with Jen. So yeah. if you're an awesome person looking for more, we'll find a way to get you in contact. So reach out through so the comments. I was going to say, so video yeah. editing. Video editing. Video editing. Um, yeah, def scripting. And the big thing is like domains, infrastructure, yeah. Yeah. Uh, things like that. I could definitely use help with. It'd be okay. awesome. Mm -hmm. well, we'll do what we Creating can. Creating channels. Yeah, email. Like What's a good email for, I was going to say, partners at clickbank.com. That's one we kind of follow. So. Sounds good. Yeah. That goes to your team, doesn't it? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, but it's not my email. So <laughs> yeah, I, know. I just say it's. Yeah. I hear not my problem. Yeah. So that sounds great. I like it. No. Yeah. Um, you know, last thing. This is just me. Is um, going on a, a tangent. One thing I'd say that if you're looking at a different thing too, another hire that somebody might be interested in out there. I think you do really well to find somebody to take all the tasks you need mm -hmm. and use AI and the AI tools Absolutely. and machine learning out there to build and replicate those. Don't do them. Find someone to go learn AI for you mm -hmm. um, and, and create scale that way. I think that would be a really exciting thing. So if anyone wants to do that for Jen, they yeah. should also reach out to Thomas's team at partners. <laughs> at Absolutely. I've, I've played around with some of the AI and it's fascinating, but it, it's like such a rabbit hole that I'm like, yeah, let me step away from this and just do what I've been doing. Yeah. Because yeah. I could, you know, really get stuck using all lot. those awesome yeah. new cool tools. Yeah. Given what you told us here, I feel like what your husband really needs is you to have another obsession. So we should really just put that. <laughs> uh, so, well, hey, Jen, I really appreciate your time. This is a great conversation. I hope everyone else enjoyed it as well, um, as much as we did. And um, the Quiet Man Whiskey, thank you again for Yeah, thank you for being our unofficial sponsor. So <laughs> <laughs> He's been so quiet all the time. Yeah, the entire time, yeah. living up to its <laughs> name. <laughs> um, but... Uh, again, hope you guys enjoyed Clarendon. it, and I hope not only you're inspired, but actually having things to go out and start changing your business today. Um, we got that, and there's nothing more you could ask than something that could change your life, and, and you've given that, and really appreciate that. So with that, until next time, please rate, review, subscribe, reach out to us, keep following the content, and let us know what more you would have. Um, but with that, until next time, please enjoy, be safe out there, and Thomas, what do we tell the people? Happy scaling. Happy scaling. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, everyone.